I declared 2011 my year of no fear when I realized I was afraid, unhappy, and too scared to take risks. That January, I celebrated my 52nd birthday in Las Vegas and decided to skydive while I was there. Because <laughs> if you're going to jump, you want to do it someplace flat where you're not going to hit a lot of buildings. <laughs> when I got to the skydive school, I was greeted by a group of super fit skydive instructors who all looked like they played in the X Games. And the first thing they do is weigh you <laughs> on an industrial scale. <laughs> There's a good time. So, there I stood in the center of a group of men being weighed. At the time, I was 247 pounds, and I was only three pounds under the weight limit. I'd been so worried about the weight limit, I'd call the school twice to confirm it was 250. And I think I actually said, if I get there and you tell me I can't jump, somebody's getting hurt. <laughs> the reason that mattered to me was I had been 400 pounds. So to get below 250 was a big deal. After they weighed me, I realized that I needed to go through a few more steps. Now, if you've ever seen anybody skydive, you know that when they jump, everything moves, right? Their face <laughs> jiggles, their body jiggles. So before, the le before I left the hotel, I'd put on Spanx from my ankle to my neck. <laughs> so. The first thing they have you do after the weigh-in is they have you watch a safety video, which I'm going to tell you now did not make me feel safe. <laughs> this is what I remembered hearing. You're jumping out of a plane by your own choice, and you could die. Thanks for coming. <laughs> so the truth is you jump with a trained, experienced instructor who's done it thousands of times. After the video, my instructor said to me, I need you to show me that you're physically capable of the jump. And he told me I had to hold my legs up to my chest for 20 seconds without using my hands. It's like doing a crunch. I couldn't do it. I'd lift my legs up and my muscles would shake and my feet would hit the floor. And he said, if you can't do it, you can't jump. I thought my year of no fear had gotten off to a pretty bad start. I was mortified. I sat there alone, embarrassed and dejected, when the lead jump instructor, whose name was Leonard, came to me and said, if you grab the material of your pants, can you hold your legs up for 20 seconds? <laughs> so I said, I'll try. I showed him and I could do it. Leonard said, all right, I'll take you up and I'm gonna modify the jump. Go suit up. So I go back to the locker room, I put on the jumpsuit, it is silver. I come out, I look like a giant satellite dish. <laughs> but my personal motto has always been, if you can't hide it, decorate it. <laughs> so... <laughs> so I just rocked the jumpsuit. Now, remember my Spanx? So Leonard goes to put me into the harness, and as he's putting me in, his hand brushes my stomach. And he said, you're very firm. And I said, thank you. Because <laughs> the truth is, sometimes you're held together by Spanx or tape or glue, and it's nobody's business but your own. <laughs> so the plane takes off. As it's my turn to exit, Leonard says to me to get on the floor of the plane and dangle my legs out of the door. And he reminds me of the exit instructions. And the truth is, you don't really jump out of a plane when it's tandem, they really just push you. <laughs> so out we go, and it's so loud. You have the wind rushing at you, you hear the plane leaving, and the earth is rushing toward you, and you can't even hear yourself think. Then Leonard pulls the chute, we jerk straight up, I get the world's biggest wedgie, <laughs> right from the harness. <laughs> and then we started to float and it was the most incredible quiet I've ever experienced. Suddenly, I was washed over with gratitude and joy, and I thought, I've done it. I've started my year of no fear, and I started shouting, and Leonard had a camera on his hand, and he's videotaping, and I'm going, year of no fear, and I'm bawling my eyes, and I'm thanking everybody who'd ever said hello to me. <laughs> it was like, it 
was my version of an Academy Award speech. I'm crying, crying, crying. And I kept yelling, year of no fear, and I kept doing this. And as we were floating down, I started to see the people who had left the plane before me begin to land. And I watched them as they were lifting their legs up to their chest, right? And they were running with their instructors. It was like a Beyonce video. <laughs> the chutes billowing behind them, and they're doing this. It was so beautiful. And then it dawned on me. <laughs> I hadn't asked Leonard what it meant to modify the jump. And suddenly I hear, grab your pants! <laughs> so I grab the pants of my jumpsuit, I lift them up, I hold them, and then I thought, I'm not gonna have the Beyonce wind machine landing, am I? I'm gonna land on my ass. And that's exactly what happened. We hit the ground, we booty bounced a couple times, I scraped across the gravel, and landed in a cloud of dust. <laughs> and as the dust swirled around me, this is what I thought. You did it. You jumped out of an airplane. It wasn't the Beyonce video, but I had done it. I had done it. I declare 2011 is my year of no fear because I was afraid I would always feel afraid. And I was afraid I'd regret my life. And research shows I'm not the only one. Business Wire conducted, a, a, printed some research by Alliance Insurance that said 38% of adults regret not taking risks in their careers. 35% of adults regret not being gutsier in their life. Victoria Medvik of the Kellogg School did some research that said, as time passes, we regret what we don't do, not what we do. So what would a jump look like for you? It might be raising your hand for a promotion, speaking up when you're terrified, leaving a bad relationship. It doesn't matter what it is, and it doesn't have to be big and bold like jumping out of a plane. What matters is you identify it and you find out what's keeping you from doing it. In the middle of 2011, I decided to leave my 30-year career to start my own business. At the time, I was a senior vice president of a Fortune 50 company. I had a big job in a big company, and I, I made great money, and I wasn't happy. I wasn't spending the maturity of my time doing work that I loved and making the impact I wanted to make. And here's the thing, it's really easy to say, you're not happy? Quit your job. I think that's terrible advice. <laughs> In my year of no fear, I did my homework. I looked at my money and I calculated the risk. I certainly didn't jump out of a plane without a parachute, and I wasn't going to leave my job without some consideration and planning. But the problem is, for most of us, is we do the planning, but we never take the risk, we never leave the plane, and we never make the jump. As 2011 oh, was rounding to a close, I announced my departure to my boss and to my team. They were surprised but happy for me. And I started my business in 2012. My business has grown. I've fallen on my ass a couple of times, but I've gotten back up because my superpower is I'm afraid every day and I jump anyway. So now I'm celebrating five years in my, of my business and jumping. As 2011 was winding to a close, I got dared to do something that terrified me. My friend Susan asked me why I wasn't dating. I'd had a disastrous, short-lived first marriage, my practice husband. But dating, marriage, and men were no longer part of my life plan. And she said, isn't this your year of no fear? Aren't you supposed to do everything that scares you? <sighs> Don't you hate when a friend dares you to do something and she's right? 
Dating for me was scarier than jumping out of a plane and more terrifying than leaving my job to start my own business. It physically made me afraid. But in the spirit of the year of no fear, I took the dare, and without telling anybody, I posted a profile on one of those online dating sites. Because I'm over 50 and plus size, I was pretty sure I wouldn't hear from anyone. But the day my profile posted, I got a note that said someone had liked my profile. I was thrilled! <laughs> like, I don't even know what this means. <laughs> but I was so delighted. So I wrote that person a thank you note. <laughs> yeah. So on the other side of that note was a guy who didn't know that when he liked a profile, it sent somebody a note that said, you've liked this person's profile. He was mortified. <laughs> but he was also really polite, and he responded to my thank you note. When I looked at his profile, I thought, huh, he's clearly bright, and he knows how to write, but it was hard to tell what he looked like. And his second picture was of his cat. <laughs> and I thought, oh, cat guy. <laughs> but we kept corresponding, and by about the eighth note, he asked if he could call me. The night we chatted, we had a lovely conversation back and forth, and about an hour in, he said, Grace, I have something to tell you. You're going to find it really charming or really creepy. I hope you find it charming. And I braced myself. All right, here he comes. He's a serial killer. He lives with his mother. He's married. He wants to wear my clothes. I don't know. And he said, and I'm waiting, and he said, I collect action figures. <laughs> Dolls, I asked? <laughs> no, 12-inch G.I. Joe action figures. And I have 400 of them. <laughs> Do they talk to you? <laughs> no. Do you talk to them? <laughs> no. Do they sleep with you? <laughs> no. And I thought, I can live with this. <laughs> we had our first date two days later. He was charming, smart, and funny and he made me laugh in the first three minutes. And his name is Leonard. It's not the same Leonard, <laughs> but clearly a really good name for me. If you've seen Big Bang Theory, if Leonard and Sheldon had a baby, that's who I married on April Fool's Day, 2014. Pretty good, huh? It's cute as hell. So, what would a jump look like for you? What would it look like? Is it going back to school? Is it doing something that terrifies you, like trying to date again? Is it asking for something that you want or leaving something that doesn't serve you? It doesn't matter. What matters is you decide the life you want to have for yourself. It matters that you take action. Jumping requires that you do something. Don't live a life afraid and unanswered because you haven't jumped. In order to rise, you will have to jump. Here's what I learned in my year of no fear. It's okay to be afraid. <laughs> It's okay to be afraid. Jump anyway. I've learned that sometimes you're going to be held together by Spanx or tape or glue, and that should be your little secret. I've learned that it's okay to modify the jump. 
I've learned that it's okay to land on your ass. Because <laughs> it's not always the landing that matters. And I've learned that you only regret the jumps that you don't make. So remember, good things come to those who jump. And I double dog dare you <laughs> to start your own year of no fear. Thank you.